Hey everybody, it's time for a catch up. It has been a minute since I've been on YouTube. So I thought I would give you a catch up on what I've been reading and what's been going on in my life. So let's get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you all doing? I hope you guys are doing very, very well. I hope you're safe. I hope you're healthy. I hope you've been reading a little bit. Life has been a bit of a jumble for me um, in the last week and a so. So I thought I would give you guys a quick catch up video today where I just sort of tell you what's been going on and then also just share with you the books that I've read, the books that I'm currently reading and the books that I plan to read next. So of course there will be books. So get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your goodreads. However, you keep track of your TBR. If any of these books interest you, please try to order them from your local independent bookstore. Or if you're a library user, get your library to get them to you as soon as possible. So what has been going on? Where have I been? So my last video was my collaboration with Hunter at Shelf by Shelf on Instagram. We talked about the National Book um, Award 2020 Fiction Longlist, gave you guys some of our opinions on it. And we are both, I think, diligently trying to read away. Um, and things were going pretty smoothly for a couple days after that. However, um, about Wednesday, both of our dogs got sick for some reason, had some tummy issues, which led to many, many trips outside at all hours of the night and all hours of the day. So Dan and I were living on minuscule amount of sleep as we tried to figure out what was wrong with the dogs. We had to do a diet change. We had to do all this kind of stuff just to figure out what it was. Um, and that really sucked a lot of energy out of us. Um, our littlest dog, Blanche, who you guys have all seen before, has never been sick before um, in her six years with us. So it was a little bit surprising. She's never had any of the issues. So it was very hard on her and very hard on us. So yeah, that led to not much reading, not much videoing, really just taking care of the kids. That was really our main goal. Um, and then after that, um, around the same time towards the end, um, I got a splitting migraine. I haven't had a migraine. I had migraine issues when I was in college and just right out of college, but it has been many a year. But there's a lot going on in life right now, and I think the stress just sort of got to me a little bit and the migraine decided to come and take a seat for a couple of days, um, which then led into a sinus infection. And then as you guys know, cause I know you're all readers. I know you're all readers and you, a lot of you wear glasses like I do. Um, but I was having that instance where I could tell that it was about time my vision was sort of having issues focusing and it was causing additional headaches. So I had to go in, get my eyes checked, true to be form. Um, yeah, I had to get my eyes re-examined because I'd gone up a whole entire level in my prescription. Um, and this is what my eye doctor and everyone that worked at my eye doctor said to me the entire time, which just put me in a bad mood. I'm just telling you, people of your age, Russell, people of my age, I am 43 years old, <laughs> but I have learned people of my age, tend to be progressing into progressives or bifocals, um, which is fine. I was ready for it. I know I'm a reader and I use my computer all day for work. So my eyes are constantly in that strain of, you know, looking at the screen or looking at a book. So I was ready for it, but I didn't have to be told over and over and over again, but whatever. I like my eye doctors. I like the people that work there. So forgive and forget. So finally, I'm sort of being able towards the end of that to sort of pick things up a little bit and get some reading done, get myself moving forward and sort of get back on track. Um, so I apologize that I've been gone so long, but you know, sometimes life just throws stuff at ya. Um, it's been really hot here in San Jose, but also we've had another wave of the smoke coming in. All the windows are closed. So best wishes to anyone in Northern California that are affected by the new fires. Please base be, please be safe. Um, and anyone who is affected by any of the weather that's going on in the world right now, I hope that you guys are very, very safe. So I thought today what I would do is just a quick catch up on what I've been reading, 
what I am currently reading and what I plan to read next. So most of this, you guys, is going to fall within the National Book Award long list um, because that's what I'm trying to get myself through. And it has been a fantastic fantastic journey. So let me tell you about two books that I just finished. I'm not going to go into huge detail, um, but I am going to just tell you about them and let you know that both of them are 100% worth your while. The first book is The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filia. I'm, I'm not sure if we hit the W. Filia. I'm not sure there at the end, so I'm apologizing, Disha. This is actually out from West Virginia University Press. Um, this is a collection of short stories about different women who sort of all belong in the same sort of, I wanna, I'm going to say church circle, but their lives sort of interconnect. But they're different short stories about different events that happen in these women's lives, these black women. It's very much about sort of their experiences in different sort of situations. Um, it's so hard, you know, for me to explain a um, short story collection without um, like going into each story. But so I, what I will tell tell you is my absolute favorite short story is called Snowfall. It is a powerful story about a couple, a lesbian couple that move away from their family into snow, into an, a weather um, system that they are not used to, a place where they have very few friends. And it talks about sort of about the, the dynamics, not only of their relationship in this new location, but also their family dynamic as they came into their relationship and decided to move on together um, as a couple. Um, it was very true. Like I just felt the realness of it. And also at the end, it just had an ending that made me well up with tears. It is an excellent excellent collection of short stories, you guys. I really, really loved it a lot. Um, and I am super happy that it made it on to the National Book Award long list because I want a lot of people to read it. I had never heard of it and shame on me because it is fantastic. And that's The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filia, Filia? out from West Virginia Press. Okay, next is the Ch uh, A Children's Bible by Lydia Millet. Now, I had not heard of this. This is out from Norton, but I had seen it a couple of places and actually had read a review right before it wound up on the long list from Hunter, from Shelf by Shelf. He had just finished it. And so this book sort of surprised me to be on the list, but then once I sort of got into it, I could kind of see why it was there. This is to me sort of like a biblical allegory brought to the present. It's about a group of children that are all brought to a house um, by their wealthy sort of, well, semi-wealthy parents. They rent this huge house. The, the kids are very much an afterthought, sort of given this one room to go to, entertain yourselves while the parents are all about sort of debauchery and doing whatever they want and they really don't care a lot about their children. So much so that there's a game amongst the children about to guess whose parents are whose. That's how connected these families are. Um, a huge storm comes in and it causes, it's a lot of, it's an allegory really about global warming and what could happen to the world with global warming. And it's about these children that go off to sort of survive and the different things that can happen in the world. It's got a very dystopian vibe to it and all of that. I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done. It's got a very, the narrator is one of the young girls and she's got a great voice. Um, and the pages just turn and turn and turn. I really liked it. More to come in my review, but A Children's Bible by Lydia Millet out now from Norton. You can get your hands on it. So those are the last two books that I read. Now for the books that I'm reading. And one of these is kind of a cheat because I finished it right before I started this video. And that is Arabian Jazz by Diana Abu Abu Jabir. Um, and this is actually a book that came out in 1993 and the newest um, uh, book for the Spilling Tea Book Club, which will be meeting on Zoom on October 10th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you are interested, have read the book or want to try to read it in the next week or so, and you want to get on the train, uh, we host this book club, my friend Ryan and I, and we have a great time. This is the story of an Arabic family in um, that have come to America. They are from Jordan originally, and it's the story of two young girls. Their mother died when they were very young, and they're relationship not only with themselves 
their family, like their immediate family with their father, but also with sort of the overwhelming family obligations and expectations that come from abroad and their local family. They have an aunt, Fatima, who is very much all about these two young girls getting married. Um, one is about to turn, Jem, who is one of them, is about to turn 30 years old. And it's like, she's almost to that point where she's beyond being able to be married. And the family is just trying to figure that out. The dad want, doesn't have sort of the same expectations. His daughters live with them. They're very happy in their own little family unit. But it's really about Jim finding out who she wants to be and what she wants to do next in life. Her sister, who is like a young, young nurse. I always forget her name. Let me see if I can... Um, Melvina. Um, she is a young nurse on the floor. They both all work in this hospital. And it's sort of about how their community and this rural community comes together and tells their story of their own independence and what they're willing to do to sort of figure out the dynamic of their family. It's got some dark pieces to it. I'm sure Ryan and I will talk about it. I'm not doing a full review here. I really enjoyed it. It's really readable. Both uh, Jem and Melvina are very compelling characters. I really liked it. So that is Arabian Jazz by Diana Abu Jaber. And this is out now because it's been out since 1993, you guys. Um, this is a hardback version that I picked up and I just love the cover so very, very much. Next is one of the most talked about books, which I'm almost done with it, of the entire year. And that is Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. This is out here in the U.S. from Grove Press. Um, this book is currently shortlisted for the Booker Prize. I think it's statistically the favorite to win, but you never know with the Booker. You never know with the Booker. Um, and it is also long listed for the National Book Award. This is the story of a um, Shuggy, who is a young, um, clearly queer little boy who lives with his mother in 1980s Glasgow, and she is a raging alcoholic, and alcohol has really defeated all relationships in her life. And it's the, the story of their relationship through her um, addiction and his growing up. It deals a lot with how he's treated by his peers, how he's treated by the men in his life, and it also is about her sort of her utter, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, she has to have people in her life that give her validation. She just, the mother, Agnes, just she cannot seem to stand on her own two feet without someone else giving her validation. And um, I'm not going to go too much into it, but it's really much about that relationship. It's one of those books that, well, if you're about a family story, if you like sort of the ups and downs of that, and you like the heartbreak and at times heartwarming nature of it, this book will really speak to you. Um, and, you know, how many people... How many books have you read set in Glasgow, Glasgow, Scotland in the 80s? There you go. <laughs> that was a hard sentence for me to say. Um, so that's Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. And I said when I posted this on Instagram, it's really the talk of the town. It's really the talk of every town. This book has been everywhere since it came out. So there you go. That is the other book that I am currently reading. Now I have three more books on the national book long list that I am going to be reading, but I'm only going to tell you about one of or two of them. This is what I'm going to be reading next. One is the short story collection, If I Had Two Wings by Randall Keenan. This is out from Norton right now. Um, sadly, Randall just passed away before the National Book Award um, announced their long list. And Roxane Gay, who is the chair of that, said that they had picked this book to be on the long list before he passed. And they were, you know, there's sort of a sad um, that he didn't get to know that. This cover is gorgeous. This catfish is just beautifully iridescently gorgeous. Totally obsessed. I think it's, um, you know, it's a bunch of short stories set in the South. Has that sort of um, tying theme of Southern families and all that kind of stuff. I haven't read it yet. I'm going to dive into it soon. I am really excited about it. Friends that I know who have read it have raved about it. So that's really exciting. So If I Had Two Wings, stories by Randall Keenan out from Norton. And the last book that I'm going to tell you about is a book that just came out, I believe. I know it is also a book of the month club choice, and that's Leave the World by ha Behind by Ruman Alam. This is out from Echo Books. I have been wanting to read this book. I planned to read it. Then it was on the long list, so I put it off so that I could read it in the whole thing. But um, I'm totally obsessed with this book. The story of a couple with their two children who go to sort of um, a rural part of New York in an Airbnb 
to get away from the city, to get way away from their jobs, to have a vacation. When one night a young black couple shows up and says that they're the, actually the owners of the house. They were in New York. New York has shut down and they are fleeing and they've come to this house in order to be safe. And then it's what happens, the dynamic. Now the family that was there has no access to phones or TV, can't verify the story, can't verify anything about what's supposedly happening in New York. And it's the dynamic of the dynamic between these like families that are now having to deal with each other who don't really know with each other. I hear it's a very tense book. There's like a thriller aspect and it all happens, I believe, over one weekend. So that's Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam out from Echo. Right now, you can probably get your hands on it right now. So I hope you guys like this. I'm sorry that I've been away. I know Ryan and I are going to be recording later on today for our book club. I will get my videos back on track for you guys. Um, I am feeling much, much better. Um, so things are headed in the right direction. So as always, if you're a return subscriber, thank you. If you are new to my channel, I hope you liked it. I hope you subscribed. I hope you come back for more. If, um, as always, I encourage you to shop locally, read globally. Until next time, I wish you happy reading. Bye.